Hey guys, it's Quickie Baby, and welcome to another World of Tanks video. Today, B Birdie is going to show you how he performs in the FB215B. This is the Tier 10 British Heavy Tank, and it's kind of a lot like a T1105, but it kind of foregoes a little bit of the flexibility of the T1105 to get a rear mounted turret with a better performing gun. Now, the turret armor on this tank is much better than the T125 if you also include the fact that the top part of this tank is not nearly as weak as the machine gun port on top of the T125. This does come at a cost however. The lower plate on this tank is very weak indeed and you also lose one degree of gun depression. But if you can find positions to make the seven degrees of gun depression on this tank work then boy, it's really hard to dig you out, at least frontally. Obviously, side on the turret is a huge profile and very weak. And the side armor on this tank is very weak indeed. Now, B Birdie's trying to hide most of his armor here, and he manages to catch a Tiger II in the tracks. And check out the rate of fire on this gun. It's 120 millimeter, one of the highest DPM heavy tanks. Able to quickly rip apart that Tiger II. Now it looks like B Birdie has some experience in this vehicle. He's got two stripes on his gun and he's playing in a platoon with two T-1025s. An enemy T-34 puts in a great shot, taking his tracks off and also damaging his fuel tanks, even though B Birdie angled his side armor. And that's one of the main problems of this vehicle. If you're able to catch it here at this kind of an angle, it's very likely to go in as the side armor on this tank is very weak indeed. Nevertheless, its armor is pretty strong against these tier 8 tanks. T-32 has terrible penetration. 200 millimeters at most, unless he wants to fire premium ammunition, which will really struggle to go through even the relatively thin armor on the FB215B. So the enemy team has flanked around, just like what the Birdies platoon has done. Each team has sort of sacrificed tanks to be able to push through one of the flanks, but now the Birdie and his platoon see that they need to get back. He's showing some good marksmanship skills there to put two shots quickly into the T124 very valuable tank to take out with very fallible armor. That shot looked a little rushed. It's a shame as well because planting one into that bat chat would have been great for his team. The enemy bat chat has picked up three kills but now Birdie's attention is towards the 100. And something that happens a lot to me and something that a lot of people don't think about and that is that the guns on dead tanks can also interrupt your fire. He's aiming down on the lower plate of an E100 there. That's quite unlikely to go in unless he gets a high roll. And a second bounce really puts the pressure on him here. So he goes forwards and face hugs him and tries to block him with his gun as well. Stop him from shooting his top. He does well. Tries to penetrate the turret ring on the E100 but is struggling. Now, Birdie would have saved himself a lot of money so far if he had probably loaded a premium round there. He would have been able to go straight through the turret face of the E100. But he handled the situation fairly all right in the end after the first two bounces. And this game is looking really fast right now. There's a huge amount of pressure on Birdie and his platoon. These three tier 10 tanks are trying to cut their way through the enemy team when his allies outside of the platoon have only managed to secure two kills between them so far. But Birdie definitely knows how to side scrape in the FB215B and the rear mounted turret is one of the best aspects of this tank for doing so. Combining that with the excellent rate of fire with an accurate low aim time 120mm allows you to just rip through your opponents very quickly indeed. Now, but Birdie sees that there is an IS-3 in the base on very low health, and unfortunately, his platoon 
even though they've gone down kicking and screaming, are finally beginning to fall. Outnumbered and with enemy artillery support, even the T-125, top tier in a matchup such Anything as this, destroyed. will eventually be brought down. But Birdie is already up to 5 kills and 4,400 damage. He has missed a couple of shots and he probably lost a little bit more health against that E-100 than he should have. But all in all, a solid round so far. However, this is where things are going to get good. He manages to go forwards and get the jump on the enemy. He ignores the 1375, focusing on the danger that is the IS-7. That tier 10 Soviet tank, if allowed to get out of this alleyway, will be an absolute pain for him. Some very good shots. Secure the kill on him, and he focuses his attention on the E-75. He was quite lucky to bounce that E-75, but knowing how fast his reload is, he puts the pressure on the enemy tier 9 German heavy tank. And right now spots that the French tier 7 light tank tries to put some pain on him. Now I don't like what he did here. Driving straight out down this alleyway when it's very likely that the enemy artillery would be aiming down it really leaves him open to fire. Nevertheless, he shows a good amount of map awareness here, spotting the enemy artillery behind him that has now appeared to the north at B5. He gets out the alleyway almost flawlessly and only takes one shot from the Panther II, removing all of that tier 8 medium tank's hit points very quickly indeed. Now the birdie changes to the HE ammunition on this tank, which is Hesh type. He fires one through the buildings, through the windows, just over the 1375 to claim the life of the enemy tier 10 autoloader. The M53, thinking that his reload will be long, rushes in and rushes the shot, but Birdie dodges it, puts in one more, and it doesn't matter that it didn't penetrate, he rams the enemy to death. What a fantastic display of raw power here by Baberdi, as well as some finesse at the end of the game. He achieved this Colobanos medal, 1 versus 5 at the end of the game, in a fantastic fashion. When you're outnumbered, you need to go at your opponents one by one by one. You can't let them gather up and surround you, otherwise it's certain demise for you. And using the alright mobility, but fantastic gun capabilities on the FV215B, b he was able to pick his opponents apart one by one by one. We also got to see a good use here of the Hesh mechanics on this tank. A lot of people don't give credit to this 120mm Hesh ammunition, which has 120 millimeters of penetration and 515 alpha damage. This, for example, is more than capable of going through an enemy leopard, an enemy bat chat, all of the new scouts that have been added into the game, as well as increasing your chance to one-hit enemy tier 10 artillery to probably about 75%. While there was no doubt that Baberdi made some mistakes here, I was overall very impressed by this performance. He was able to get the crucial contribution medal for his platoon getting 11 kills in a tier 10 game. That's an absolutely fantastic result. And it really makes me want to go and get back into my tier 10 British heavy tank, for which the future is very uncertain as Wargaming are hinting that it's going to be replaced by the Chieftain. Anyway, let's just take a very quick look at the post-game stats. For Birdie gained 2,361 experience in that game. That's 1,574 base achieving over 8,000 damage with 11 kills. He had very little ammunition left at the end of the game, and that's one of the weak points of the FV215B. You really can't afford to bounce too many shots, or if you're required to have an outstanding impact in the game like the birdie did here, then you're going to run out of ammo. Now let's not take away from also his platoon's performance. Skill Padden Yo managed to pick up 3,500 damage and whoops, 4,000 damage. That is a huge impact by this platoon, and it's undeniable that they won the battle for their team. Congratulations for Birdie on the Kolobanov's medal, that's for standing alone versus five enemy tanks, which is very impressive, especially in a tier 10 battle. The main reason why I'm showing you guys this video is because it highlights the strengths of the FV215B. Fantastic rate of fire, fairly good mobility, some turret armor that can work, 
and the rear mounted turret which allows you to side scrape around corners. As well as tactical use of the Hesh ammunition at the end of the game which probably secured it for him. Anyway I hope you enjoyed this replay, if you did please consider giving the video a like down below, it really helps the channel out. And let me know in the comments what you think about the FV215B and what you think Wargaming might do with the Chieftain replacement that I believe is coming up. Are you an FV215B driver and you're really sad by this? Or do you maybe have this tank and you can't wait for it to be changed? Let me know why. Also in other news, I finally got round to having the time to play Alien Isolation. I've been absolutely loving it, it has scared the bejesus out of me. And if you want to see the reactions, you can find them in the highlights of my Twitch channel. And I'll put the link to one of my favourites in the description below. Anyway, as always guys, thank you so much for watching. You've been epic and hopefully I'll see you soon.